Hi, I'm Chef Garrett. Welcome to another terrific edition of 90 Miles with Chef Garrett. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this week's show. I'm here at Benton's Smoky Mountain Hams, and this is the mecca for great ham and bacon. And I know chefs all over the country, from New York to Napa Valley. All of these fellas are all featuring Benton's country ham and Benton's bacon on their menu. And you know, here's the thing, it's made right here in Madisonville, Tennessee, right off Highway 411. The man behind it all, Alan Benton. We're gonna go in and meet him right now, come on. So here I am, Benton's country hams, and there's the man himself, Alan Benton. Pleasure to meet you. Finally put a face to the name. Chef How Jack. are you? Welcome here. Pleasure Glad to, to meet, meet you. you. My pleasure's out. I'm delighted. Well, I've heard nothing but fantastic things about you and your operation, and I want you to just give me a wee bit of background now, and then tell me how we do this. Well, we've been in business since 1947. I didn't start the business. A gentleman by the name of Albert A. Hicks started here in our county. I've run the business since 1973. I was a struggling high school guidance counselor who figured out he'd made a poor career choice and I got into the country ham business uh, through Albert Hicks and I've been doing it ever since. Now had you any experience at all before that? Oh of course, we, uh, uh, we were rural folks and my grandparents lived very isolated in the mountains of Virginia and we always butchered hogs. We did it in our backyards in a log smokehouse behind the house I was born in and I still use the original family recipe on all hams here that are going to be a I was going to ask, there's no variation from no, what you, your, no. your grandparents did when you were a little nipper. We feel very blessed that people like what we're doing. We continually try to tweak it and change things to suit it changing taste, but uh, that's part of being a dish. Sure, but the basic recipe stays the, the same. Basic recipe and the, stays and the, the way same. you handle your product and the way you bring it from start to finish. Oh, absolutely. There's no difference. Absolutely. It's still the, that old the, the world key, The key is to find good quality pork. My grandparents, long about the fall of the year in August, they would turn their hogs loose in the mountains to forage for acorns or whatever they could get. And I grew up eating exceptional quality fresh pork. and. As soon as I got into the business, I realized the kind of pork I was able to buy from the slaughterhouses was not like what I'd always been accustomed to. Right. Now, we're blessed because we're finding small producers here and there that are growing these old varieties of hogs again, which have a little more fat and, and intramuscular marble. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to make something really good. Than oh, absolutely. Like that. And I think the secret is, for, for a lot of folks now, is going back to the way things used to be. And I feel very blessed that uh, people are recognizing what we're doing is some different from what some producers are doing and that they like what we're doing. So. I'm excited. I'm dying to see the way we do it. You show me. Let's go back and we'll give you the 50 cent tour. Try and stop me. Come on. All right, Garrett, come on in. Oh, here it is. These hams. We brought in from a company called Heritage Foods. Uh, Heritage is pretty much loosely what I describe as a cooperative of about four to five hundred small farmers out in the Midwest. They agree to raise old breeds of hogs. They're raised on pasture, no antibiotics and feed. And we use the original family recipe. This, this is a salt sugar cure. Salt, brown sugar, black and red pepper. And uh, we'll age these hams to uh, about uh, Probably 14 to 22 months in age. So There's going to be a minimum of 12 months. They have the more fat, as you can see. Yeah, great marbling. Uh, great marbling. Uh, chefs tend to really fight. This is what you call a free range hog. It's a free range, range hog. Yes, it is. It is. It's a grazer. That's right. And we bring them in, we rub the cure on them, we leave them for about a week, and we come back and rework more cure into them and restack them. And they stay in this cooler at about uh, 38 to 40 degrees for close to two months. Then we take them out and we hang them on racks in another cooler to spend some time drying and losing weight. Right. And we keep them in that cooler for another couple of months on average. And that's all the time moisture is leaving the hand, yes, correct? That's, that's so correct. To get the, the excess water out it's and you're intensifying flavor. It's a drying process, a, you're right. And it's a very labor intensive process. Oh, we're doing it old school, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And from here to racks and we yes. dry them. And the dry them. Step two. Well, I'll tell you, Alan, everywhere I go and all the top chefs that I come in contact with, when they talk to me about their ingredient list and their supplier list, they always mention Benton's bacon, Benton's ham. It is the mecca for great pork products. Probably, I would have to say, from what I'm told, the finest in the country. Well, we feel very fortunate that they feel like that. 
I've always said I'd rather be lucky as smart anytime. <laughs> I feel very lucky that they like what we're doing. Uh, I'm doing this probably no better than my grandparents did it in the backyard, and I owe it to the chef's creativity that they're using it in the ways they use it, because they use it in ways that defy my imagination. And I, truly feel blessed that they like it. Well, that's true, but you know, the other side of that coin is every chef will tell you, you can't turn a, you know, a, a silk purse out of a sow's ear. <laughs> well, that's true too. Thing. So you gotta start with great ingredients and not mess them up too much. That really is the secret to a great chef. <laughs> we were starving to death when these chefs started coming on board, and I owe so much of that relationship to the folks at Blackberry Farm here in East Tennessee because the, the Bell family and John Fleer, who came there as chef, uh, simply put my name out there, or I would probably be out of business today. I'm not sure I would have survived without them. They single-handedly shared my product with great chefs all across the country, and that's what gave us the exposure. I have no marketing skills. We're just blessed for that relationship. Now, I want to see where the rubber meets the road, because don't you have a bit of a, a sampling that I might be able to taste here and just see well, how good those, it is? Uh, Chef, those guys are boning out some hams up there right now. Would you like to try some I of the think we, I think we owe oh, it to ourselves. Come on up. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Try a piece and see what you think, Chef. That's right there. That's beautiful. Oh, see. All the excess moisture and dried out. And you know, this is not excessively salty, which is what you find in country ham so often. Mmm. Well, that's delicious. Again, it goes back to that original family recipe that I described for you. And chefs have learned they can substitute it. They don't have to pay a fortune to get an imported ham to find a quality ham. And I think I think there's probably in the last five or six years uh, there's been a tremendous attitude change on the part of American chefs. I think that uh, a lot of them up until that time thought you did have to go to Europe to get a good ham. I think they're beginning to realize that some of the artisanal producers in this country can put out something equal to our European cousins. Well, I think so too. There's no doubt about it. We can do anything in the States. I mean, there's no doubt if, about it. If that. we'll dedicate ourselves to quality. Absolutely. Quality is the issue. Absolutely. Quality. I agree. Proper technique, proper time, proper care. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. that's what you're doing. Well, it was a real pleasure meeting you, Alan. Chef, pleasure to have Thanks, thanks for coming down. Much obliged. Hey, you're a charming fella. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Pleasure's ours. Hope you'll come back. I will. Count on it. Well, let me tell you something. That is one charming gentleman in there. And boy, does he do a fantastic job. In this case, this is your grandfather's bacon. Because you're not going to find bacon and ham like that anywhere in a supermarket. This stuff is absolutely fantastic. And I am packed and ready for the road. And speaking of the road, it's time we ran to... Well, we're going to Kevin Brown's Burger Place. It's supposed to be absolutely incredible, uh, but I cannot pronounce the name of the town, and neither can the producer or anybody else here, so we're going to go to the town and have them tell us where we are. Let's try that. <laughs> 90 Miles with Chef Garrett is proud to have been brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourism. We want you to explore the possibilities of Tennessee. The stage is set for you for everything you need to see in Tennessee. Log on to tnvacation.com.